Hello everybody, welcome to our little informal get together. I'm Mark, and this is AB. AB, I'm the funny one. He's the one who thinks he's funny. Okay, so this is the back block. This is the Tweed River here. The front block runs all the way down to the Tweed River and, and across here. Sorry. So there are four what I call fingers or ridges running down that back block and that's where we've allocated most, most of the spots. And one of the things we're going to talk about in the 10 reasons to recreate villages, resilience, resilience, resilience. We have to be because we are going to come up against the uh, purported or alleged authorities and uh, you know, we have to push through all that sort of stuff. What I want to have on here? Um, uh, essentially the, the financials of the, the community, we're very transparent, is that uh, once these four parcels are sold, we need to sell one more parcel and we're totally unencumbered. Anything that uh, comes in from unit sales there is puts the community in the black. So that's for uh, ongoing costs and future infrastructure. Did you uh, so know there's only one parcel left? There's, there's one parcel at 120. Oh, yeah. And then past that, the next parcel that we sell makes the community turn the other way. This is my place. Sold! <laughs> um, uh, we're halfway between Yukai and Nimbin. Which uh, AB is really happy with. He buys a lot of stuff from Nimbin, apparently. Um, so, uh, <laughs> probably just out it's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those brownies are not normal brownies, AB. <laughs> we love the Tweed Shire. Is, uh, is Steve Fisher here? Steve? No? Okay. Steve? No? Okay. He looks really good. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, we've already been contacted by Tweed Shire uh, Council. And, uh, 48 hours after settling. 48 hours after settling. Uh, so obviously the locals know what we're, what we're doing there. And uh, they've already contacted our real estate agent, our lawyer, the other side's lawyer, uh, Santa Claus, and if you're trying to find out who we are and what we're doing. So uh, our lawyer is in communication with them. We, we actually rang them today. They've accused us of carrying out illegal works and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, But we want to develop a relationship with them. <coughs> oh, shit. <laughs> No, we do. I'm serious. We do want to develop a relationship with them, a really close one. Uh, yes. Uh, no, we would. Um, in all seriousness, we will. Uh, we are in communication with um, uh, a town planner called Rob Doolan, who's very well known for doing a lot of memos. So there are a lot of options for us, which uh, will not appear on YouTube, but we can talk about it with you guys. Um, there's sweeping legislation that says so, uh, Bulla Bulla is 650 acres and there's sweeping legislation that says you can have one dwelling per 100 acres. So we can have six and a half dwellings. Maybe you'll have the half one. I was, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, <it's fine. laughs> I was waiting for that. Um, and so our advice from Roth Wall, our lawyer, uh, by the way, Roth is the community expert in Australia. He's done the legal work for well over 100 communities. A lovely guy to boot. Uh, his advice to us is to just seek some kind of approval, probably not for the full amount, and then have that grow as time goes on. Most of the people, not most of the people, virtually all of the people uh, that are bought into Bull the Buller know that we don't have DA approval. So if you're looking for DA approval, the exit signs are clearly marked. That's not what we're looking for at this point in time. We will uh, explore these things as, uh, as time goes on. But um, uh, a lot of the community, so Roth will tell you, Majority of communities and MOs uh, in that area don't have approval. <laughs> what about using brownies? How many brownies? An ounce. I mean, the the packet powder. Sure. So, but you can see where we're going with it. You, as a member, you'll get to have your say and, and actually genuinely have um, have your vote count. We are very fortunate in that we've had a couple, uh, Robin and Nicole. Um, they are both lawyers, so they are going to work with Roth, uh, who is our consultant moving forward, to liaise with the council and navigate us through all that sort of stuff. So we want path of least resistance. I don't think we're not going to get council approval, but we're not going to go and get a DA, you know, like next door's 423 lot approved, you know, uh, curb and curb That's not what we're about. Yeah. Lights, power, all that stuff. Because I think there's $300,000 a kilometre is what the roads are. If you go to council standard, I mean, We've got a few kilometres of roads in our place. We don't want that. We, like, you know, that's sort of where we're at. We're, we're just exploring that and getting the, the current approval status that we've got now extended, and we will go and make the appropriate approaches to the right people at the right time. So we're not, any, we're not being bullied by it uh, at this stage, but um, we've ruffled a few feathers down there at this point. And if you guys know AB and I, we don't get bullied by authorities. <coughs> There's another protection for you 
guys too. So if, you, if you're interested, I'll send you the link to uh, the YouTube clip of myself and Mikhail, the other lawyer that helped us do the documents, in that um, uh, you're issued a unit of trust, it's a private trust, it's not going to be visible anywhere. However, let's just say that uh, uh, a bank found out, or, or the ATO or whatever, that, uh, that was a creditor of yours, that you had the unit and they wanted to repossess it. How would they sell it? The provisions in the trust are that we have to have final approval. So if that, was, if that was the case, and that unit actually doesn't relate anywhere legally to your capital improvements. So let's just say, for example, the ATO come in and say, right, AAB, you've been dodgy and you owe us $400,000. Oh, and we've just heard through someone that you've got a unit. Right, we'll just hand them the unit certificate and uh, say, well, good luck selling that. <laughs> and we'll just issue AB, yeah. because we all love AB, don't we? Because we're a family, we just issue them another unit and he stays in his house. All right, so this is the legal structure, and um, I'm already in trouble with Cherie for not having this checked before we came up, um, because the spelling on Horizons is not correct. Although it's Nimbin, we can spell it however the hell we like. <laughs> uh, so the company, we've set, up, we've set this up as a trust structure. It's a unit trust, so everybody that buys in buys a unit in trust. If you're not aware of what that is, I'm happy to sit down uh, at a different time and, and run through specifically how that works, but it's a, it's a very simple unit trust with a company as the trustee. So everybody who buys a unit is equal. There is no hierarchy at Bulla Bulla. We are all equal. Some of us are more equal than others, so they will tell you, but it's a, it's a very equal opportunity uh, situation. And, and it's a very clever structure. We've spent about $45,000 with the lawyers to get this done. It's a, it's a unique situation in that the shareholder of the trustee company is an incorporated source association called uh, Living in Harmony. <clears throat> so when you buy your unit in the trust, you become a member of the incorporated association, which is the sole shareholder of the trustee company. So it's a unique situation in that the unit holders are also the quasi-trustees. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, I'm happy to sit down uh, at, a, at a separate time and run through that. Uh, a lot of the uh, structures that Roth has put together before were in a company format, where you buy shares in the company. Uh, a lot of the people that have bought into Bulla Bulla, including myself, would like to remain reasonably anonymous. So if ever it's, uh, you're searched, your unit won't show up on any indexes. This is a private trust, but it is a public company. You cannot buy a, a public uh, item such as a motor vehicle or land or a house without it being a public entity. That's the law. <coughs> so that's the structure that we put together. It says there land block one and land block two. The farm, the 650 or 642 acres actually. Uh, I think it's 275 on the front block and 300. 46 on the back block. The front block has the homestead on it. The front block is where we're looking at doing the health retreat. The front block is where we're looking at doing an, an, an organic farm share type of operation. So the front block will be what we really interface with the public with and we want to make sure that everything is above board and council approved. The back block <coughs> is where most of the residences will be. So that's where the MO will be, 346 acres at the back. That's where the amazing views of Columbia and, and the border ranges and so forth are. <clears throat> I've got a, a view of the map coming up soon, I think. Next no? Okay, so um, is there anything else we need to cover off on the, the legal structure? No, um, I think the biggest thing for, for most people um, is uh, understanding the uh, unincorporated or the incorporated association, depending on which one um, you know, you're, you're interested in, because they ask how they can hold their shares and whether they can hold the proprietary limited or personally, or how's it go as far as the trust structure is concerned. So, um, the short answer is it all works extremely well and the same way as any other entity that we've got as far as proprietary limited trust or, or any other structure you've got. The, the difference is, is that the unincorporated or the incorporated in this instance, the incorporated association, its members are anonymous. So the members, if you wish to be anonymous and remain your shareholding or your ownership or your of that unit to be anonymous, then you can be and will be within that structure. You then just have to get your head around it, I guess your advisors or your accountants and lawyers understanding that they need to understand that you are buying the parcel of land. You need to understand that you're not buying a parcel of land, you're not. Uh, well, technically, I guess you are, you're buying 650 acres of land. But your one unit entitles you to a three acre parcel of your own private use of your land, you know, of our land, essentially, as it comes into it. So that's, I guess, the paradigm shift and the hardest bit to get your head around the structure of it. Once you understand that the incorporated association is for anonymity, nothing sinister and that you're part of the anonymity once you're in there, then all the rest of it becomes quite standard and, and quite boring structured. Your accountant's going to say, yep, fair enough, I get it. 
they just won't understand that bit there, and there's a reason. There's a reason we do that. So um, we we, we, we've done that on purpose. Things. We're trying to, um, I guess, release ourselves of that paradigm called of I mine, I mine. You are going to have the private use of three acres. That's an internal document amongst all of us. Okay, so you are buying a unit in trust. Now, what we want is for people, and I feel it already, is when you open up the front gate, you're opening up the front gate to your property. Stop thinking about your three acres. So whenever, if, if people here are going to buy in, then the reality is that a small portion of what you're paying is actually going to your little three acres. The rest of it's going to the other 500 plus acres that you get to use. And that you get to use the community centre. We're going to build an amazing community centre with a wet edge pool and a, and a gym and a pool table and a commercial grade kitchen. It's going to be yours. It's going to be yours. It's going to be yours. It's not your three acres of land. That's the, the shift that we want to uh, get people to get out of. Does that make sense? It's all about them. <coughs> so we really like that structure, but it's a different structure. Roth, actually the lawyer who's done over 100, is, is quite, at, uh, quite happy with the structure. It's not something that he's done before, and we've really pushed him to, to come up with, uh, with, with what we've done there. The, <coughs> if you're interested, there's a video that I did with Mikhail, who was a lawyer that was going to buy in. He worked with Roth and us, so you can watch that online, um, which explains the, the, the trust structure in more detail. Um, but Mikhail uh, and his family have gone, gone back to Czechoslovakia. So. All right. So we did this uh, a few days ago. There were four units available at 120,000 each. Unfortunately, now there is one. I'm sorry to say. Uh, well, I'm happy to say for Bulla Bulla, but this week we've sold three units, um, which is uh, very exciting for us, considering we haven't even really gone to the market yet. So there's one left at 120. Uh, then we're going to appropriate six at somewhere between 180 and 200. We haven't decided as a community yet. Our next big camp out is the 19th and 20th of uh, September, so we'll have more a more definitive price there. But at the, at the moment, there is one left at 100. One of the reasons for that as well is because at, at, we don't set the prices now. As a group, we, we all decide what the value of that um, of that unit is worth, and every time we, we, we reach an internal milestone or hurdle or goal, like now we get, we've got the rows down to the third ridge, I think, fourth ridge to go. Well, that all costs money, and we all want to get there. We've all, we all want to contribute to get to that point. But ultimately, as far as the community is concerned, well, we, we don't know what the end price is going to be or what we want to do. So as a community, we need to reverse engineer that and say, right, we want roads down these four peninsulas. We want a community centre. We, we would like the health retreat, but without giving out the money for that straight away, so we'll put some lamping tents up, we'll put that out there, we need to do the dam, uh, we need automatic gates out the front. So all the things that, that we've now started to realise are quite important to getting on the site as soon as possible and to make it as comfortable as possible. So by reverse engineering that from a position of the end dollar we're gonna spend, let's say it's $2 million, well, we need to sell 10 of them at $200,000 or we need to sell 20 of them at $100,000, which sounds really easily and you know, easy to do and more attractive, but then you have an extra 10 people on the property, so then we need to think about roads, I think, uh, can we cope with another 10 people, another 10 families, which is actually four people per family, so there's, you know, and it goes on. So th there's actually a formula, a lot of thought that's got to go into the reverse engineering of the pricing structure, and then that's how the next blocks will, will actually be priced and then sold, or the next units, I should say. So we currently have 19 um, uh, units in the, the trust. Uh, we envisage that there's going to be 25, we've had, they've actually been talking possibly 36 uh, families, but uh, at this point in time there are 19, well I can't say 19, there's three, uh, three sorts of 22, sorry, at this point in time, 22 unit holders. Um, these are the sorts of things that we discuss as a community moving forward. Uh, I'll show you a map in a second, but basically uh, Andrew and Kath and Craig and Phil were the three parties that were given the job of town planning in terms of setting up the allocated lots. So I'll show you a map in a second. What they've come up with is 58 lots. So even if we go to the maximum, we've already discussed that the maximum will be 36 uh, units, nobody's feeling like they're getting the last lot. We've allocated 58 beautiful lots and there's only going to be a maximum of 38, uh, sorry, 36 sold. But we certainly believe that by Christmas, Bull Bull will be fully subscribed, but as I said to you, I think for at least the next 10 years, Amy and I just want to set up communities all over Australia. All right, so that's a picture of Wollongbin. So there's, there's where um, Bulla Bulla is, it's at Mount Burrell. Here is uh, Mount Warning, I think is about there, or Wollongbin is the, is the 
the local name. And this is uh, also available. This was part of the same estate, um, and it's the, basically the village of Mount Burrell. So there's the Sphinx Rock Cafe. Um, AB calls it the Sphincter Rocks Cafe. I don't know what that's about. I've got some issues that he's going to work through. Uh, so there's the Sphinx, Sphinx Rock Cafe. Isn't that gossip? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it to your face. Um, there's the general store with the service station. Uh, there's, there was a vegetable shop there, but they unfortunately had a recent death in the family and they bailed on the business. And then there's a whole caravan park off to this side and another 10 acres on the side of the road there. So uh, we're currently negotiating on this property. We feel, um, for a, a number of reasons, that it's really important for us to secure that. I think that we will. So it's uh, the petrol station uh, and also the caravan park. The caravan park has been left run down, as, as you know, but we see it as a wonderful opportunity and it's right on the Tweed, Tweed River. So it's a, it's a really uh, exciting opportunity for us. And, and, and the, uh, the, I guess the other question is, well, what's, how do you then value it? Because that's the, the biggest issue. The unit will always have the, the intrinsic value that the unit had to start with. Let's say it was $100,000, $120,000. Essentially, that's the unit value. Because the unit, in theory, will only go up in price if the market value of that unit's gone up in price. So if we'd sold two more blocks for $250,000, you could justifiably ask two fifty dollars for your unit for your three acres. You then have the capital in and that's where you've got your house, your pool, your car, whatever you, whatever you put in there that's going to go with the tractors and the sheds and all the stuff. So you just work at a fair market price for that and you can have someone come to value that as well. So you either add that to your unit price and then that's how you reach the figure that you're happy with. You come to us or anyone that's, and there might be us at the marketing community, you know, if it's other, if it's other villages, there'll be someone who's handling the marketing side of it and we'll have an internal sales process. <coughs> Our database, I would suggest we're probably going to have a waiting list people wanting to buy. As soon as one comes available, yeah. we want it. You know, with 20 space, bang, that community's locked and so We've only got 20 which you can't get into for the next nine months. Oh, oh put my hand up for resales. So it's a whole it's a whole process and we're very much we've 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 we certainly allowed for that eventuality, but right now we're still very pioneering. So how we met Roth was through a really good friend of mine, uh, Neil Bowie, he owns a business called Omniblend and Neil uh, was the general manager of Mevlana. So I don't know if anyone knows the Mevlana community, it was an Osho community, and uh, Roth did all the, the documents for them. So we, we've taken a lot of advice from uh, Neil, who was the general manager for six years of, of Mevlana. Mm. Um, they are uh, near Mullumbimby, um, and uh, their community get two and a half acres, and they're from anywhere from five to 750,000 to buy into that community. Uh, and interesting, um, and you'll see this when you come to the Just for the land. If you want to come and see this, just to, to touch on Mark's point, is Mebbin Springs is on our left hand side and right hand side, I think two against the I think it's just the left side. So as you're driving into, to, from, you leave Aki and you head straight into, um, I've never called Aki once for anyone. Like <laughs> we'll run with that. So, so as you're heading in, so you'll see all the white fence, the picket, and, uh, sorry, the post and rail fence, but all metal, and that's Mebbin Springs. Now they're selling one acre block of land on the road. From 180. All town services, 189 grand, one acre. So we, we you know, obviously got 120, three acres and you get all the other stuff that goes with it. And but banks won't loan on it, hey? Yeah, no, no, well, we, we don't, we won't allow the units to be borrowed against because yeah, yeah, then yeah. you risk that. But but certainly the structure's able to be borrowed against, yeah, yeah. But there's nothing wrong with the structure at all. Yeah. If, if that's the, you can have a separate structure similarly behind it that if you're borrowing and using other assets and collateral, then that's fine as long as your unit, because what we don't want is for you to go and borrow the money yeah. and then in six months' time you can't pay that back. So then the ANZ comes in and goes, well, we'll step in and we'll take public control of this. Well, first of all, it's an extremely complex and um, difficult structure for them to understand the ownership. <coughs> they have no, no hope of trying to repossess it. Well, they won't touch the family. But it becomes a huge issue then, and then maybe the community's drawn into litigation. Actually, that's not technically true. Is that right? uh, in Memoir, uh, Roth has set up a structure there where they have a uh, company title mm -hmm. and then a leasehold and Westpac are lending to fill oh, in the lines yeah. of Memoir. Oh, it's a title thing. It's quite a unique structure again, Roth, okay. Roth's uh, pretty good. Yeah. It, it, it's also, that one's got a good track record though as well. Down the track, you know, it, it might get to the point that, that we change that philosophy, but right now we're saying we are really worried about the global financial markets and all the stuff and 60 billion. We actually have a, we, we sat around the camp and Mark said, wouldn't it be amazing if, if the next crisis hit? We didn't know about it. We, you know, two weeks later we said, oh really? Yeah. Original people, have you got permission from them to be on the way? Another good question. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so Gun and Buddy, or Mark McMurtry, has made contact with them. Uh, he's, yeah. It's uh, Rob Williams, is his crown name. Do you know yeah, who that they're, is? They're, they're either Naraqual or um, there's another mob yeah. down there as well. Um, Gunnan has gone and approached them for Bulla Bulla, and that's how we come up with the name Bulla Bulla. Bulla Bulla 
supported the original work, uh, which is which is together in harmony. And we've actually spoken to the local elders who, who, who well, I guess, have given us the blessing to be on the land because it is a spiritual place, and it's really important for us to do that. The other really important thing to note is that that Gunham at the moment is considering to live on the block with us as well. So um, we're actually going we're well down the track of, of talking to OSDF about. Um, offering treaties to... Oh, sorry, for those that don't know, OSDF is the original Sovereign Tribal Federation. So, um, and Mark McMurtry Governor Barney. So, we're, we're talking about potentially being able to, to talk about community members treating with the local originals. You don't have to if you don't want to, but if you do, you treat with them, you become a member of the tribe, you then can secede if you go down that track of, um, from the jurisdiction of the Crown, and because they're not recognised by the 1901 Constitution at the moment, you see all the waffle at the moment, Please vote for the Aboriginal recognition. Please recognise these Aboriginals, the poor buggers. We, you know, we we've genocidally slaughtered them forever. But now we want to put them under the Constitution, saying they're slaves. Okay, so it's it's a it's a scam. It's a scam. Don't vote yes to recognise. So them. you guys know why that happened. If you haven't seen Gunham's talk, just uh, YouTube Freedom Summits, Mark McMurtry. It's a talk that he did in Melbourne, I think, in March last year for us. Yep. And uh, he talks a lot about. It. So basically, Gunham and a few others served. I think it was Gillard and someone else in Parliament. Noticing them that the uh, the Aborigines are a sovereign tribe, they're not under the 1901 Constitution. Within three weeks, Gillard came out with the vote yes to recognise, rec recognizance, uh, recognise the Aborigines under the Constitution. That's the last thing they want. So uh, yeah, so some really interesting things that we want to do in terms of treating with the local uh, the local mob, and especially on that back block, we would like to establish that, uh, providing the whole community agrees as a, as a, as a sovereign. As a sovereign land, there's a lot of division. So when council come, we just send government out. Um, there, there, there is a lot of division, as you might, as you might know, between mobs and, and who's doing what and OSDF and recognition at the moment. Um, you find the occasional post on that Facebook page where some other original from other other tribe is upset about something or other. But the fact is, is that if anyone has to has to ask or want to argue about it, well, they can just do that with government because we said government, can you please sort this out for us? He's sovereign. So it's a very spiritual area, but it brings things up. A lot of people who live there say that it brings things up. And, and in the event that you do get um, a troublemaker and you have to move someone on, and that's always the last resort it's like when you get into a community situation, but um, to, to touch on the other self, you can sell you can sell a unit just like you'd sell anything else. It's exactly the same thing. It's registerable and it's in a format that's able to be bought. The, the paradigm, or well, the difficulty is the paradigm change for someone that you're selling it to. So if you're selling it to someone who understands coming in, it's a unit and it's yeah. fantastic. But it's way different when you stand at your three acre parcel and go, well, that's the boundary and there's the gate at the end of their house. I mean, it's done. They, they can touch and feel and see that right right now it's a it's a piece of paper. It's a, sh it's a unit. So so the resale is, a, is completely available right now. And, and I don't want to... You would, sell, you would sell it, other than what Amy just said, you would sell it as your home. So they buy the unit in the trust, but they have to understand that that's all they're buying. They're not buying the legal ownership of that three acres. Internally, they'll buy a unit in the trust that then relates to whatever capital improvements that you made. So if you build a nice big house like AB probably plans on building, it's up to you to negotiate the price. It's got nothing to do with the community. The only uh, provisions that we have is that the community okays people. Then we can't be very onerous with that. We can't just say you're not coming in because you're a sannyasin or you're a Christian. So, <laughs> We <laughs> <laughs> travel a lot. I mean, I, um, it's one of those things that that if there is a genuine troublemaker, I, I would say ninety nine percent everyone's going to want them out. If you've got someone who's on the fence, though, so that's when you go. Well, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. In the gossip and the you know the the, the, the the political stuff that goes on, we're trying to avoid all of that political stuff, and we are really straight and direct and transparent and honest. And people are a bit, a bit sort of oh okay oh well geez that resolved itself quickly. And, we're very much head on, so I think you'll find, hopefully we won't have to use that, but if we do, it's certainly in there and we can just move something like that. Um, how many of the shareholders are currently living there now and are building? I mean, is there any sites that are, any houses that are actually built yet? Uh, we only settled seven weeks ago, I think it was, seven or eight weeks ago. Uh, Steph and I are moving there, we moved our caravan there, we're gonna move there in November after, after the summit. So I think there's probably eight to 10 families that are gonna look to build within the next six months. Thanks for coming Thank out. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.